The question of the day is, do you really want to be a spanker? Today's episode is brought to you by Baby Bjorn, Ecotech certified, safe for your baby, Baby Bjorn. And today we're going to be talking about that controversial issue of corporal punishment. Do you really want to be a spanker? To get more data on this subject, we spoke to Dr. Elizabeth Gershoff about the groundbreaking research that she's been doing on this subject at the University of Texas. Well, there's three different terms that get used a lot. So there's physical punishment, corporal punishment, and spanking. Spanking is what most parents think of, and what most parents in our country do, which is basically hitting a child on the bottom with an open hand. Sometimes parents will use an object and call that spanking, so like a hairbrush or you know, wooden spoon or something like that. Sometimes that gets called paddling. Physical punishment is just kind of a general term that includes spanking, slapping, it also can include kind of more harsh things. And corporal punishment is just another term for physical punishment. Corporal means physical. It's used more internationally, that's what they call it. And in the States, we uh, use it to talk about uh, physical punishment in schools. It's a common belief that spanking's on the decline, but in actuality, it's not. It's been very prevalent for years now, and the most recent data show that at least around 90% of parents say they've spanked their child at least once in their lives. It doesn't mean people use it all the time. It doesn't mean it's their first resort. It's often the last resort after they've tried a couple things that haven't worked. Um, but still, most people spank at some point. There are some categories of spankers. There are the spankers who believe in it very strongly and, and tend to do it in a more cold way and so kind of, you know, you did this so you will get a spanking and there's not a lot of emotion involved and that's also kind of the wait till your father gets home kind of spanking. Um, so it's very measured and very kind of deliberate. Um, and those parents tend to have pretty big support for spanking. They think it's a good idea and sometimes they think it's necessary. But then there's the parents who spank more out of a last resort and when they're only pushed to the limit. And those parents spank more out of emotion. They're completely frustrated, they've tried everything, and they just lost it. Spanking just teaches them right then and there, stop what you're doing, but doesn't teach them what to do in the future. Think about if a, uh, a little boy wanted a toy that his sister had, and so he hits her to grab the toy. And the mom sees it and she says, that's not okay, you cannot hit your sister, spanks him. What the boy has learned is, if mom sees me not share, then I'm gonna get hit. So as long as she's around, I'm gonna share. But as soon as she's not around, he has no, there's no reason for him to comply. He hasn't learned why it's a good idea to share. He hasn't learned that in the long term, if you're nice to somebody, they'll be nice back to you. They'll share with you. There are several consequences to spanking that have been found in many years of research that weren't things that parents intended on achieving with their kids. So. The more kids are spanked, the more likely they are to have mental health problems like depression or anxiety, even suicide, suicidal thoughts and things like that. Um, they're more likely to be delinquent. Uh, they're more likely to be aggressive. They're um, more likely to have negative relationships with their parents. And one of the more troubling uh, associations is that the more kids are spanked, the more likely it is that they're physically abused. And that's because the vast majority of physical abuse starts out as punishment. That when parents are asked about it, they say that they tried to discipline their child and it got carried away. And again, most parents have lost it at some point and hit their child. But what's really important is making sure we do all the positive things that we know are good for kids. So reasoning with kids and talking to them about how their behaviors impact other people. Lots of positive guidance kind of things are the important things. And as long as we're doing those things, I would hazard to say that a spank once or twice in a child's life is not gonna have lasting harm. So Daddy Brad, admit it, you're a spanker. I have never spanked any of my children. Really? Well, actually, I know you, so that doesn't surprise me all, all that much, but how do you keep your cool? I just can't figure out how beating my kids would help them behave any better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm a recovering spanker because I have, on occasion, spanked the kids, and it always happens the same way, which is I'm running out of ideas, I'm getting frustrated, and then I threaten to spank them. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the first thing they do is challenge me to see if I'm serious, and then I feel like I have to follow through. That's when the spanking happens. Today's episode is brought to you by Baby Bjorn and the brand new organic comfort carrier for bigger kids up to 31 pounds. If you've got thoughts on corporal punishment, either pro or con, or you want to respond to Dr. Gershoff's study, go to dadlabs.com and drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And you can expect to hear back from us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Dad Labs.